We have lots to talk about today, including all kinds of trade and free agent rumors heading into the offseason. Sounds like the Montreal Canadiens are having lots of conversations and are focused on two young potential star players that they may be trying to acquire. We'll discuss the latest on that. Plus, we have lots of trade speculation around the New Jersey Devils and the Ottawa Senators. Lots of free agency talk around players like Jake Gensel. Uh, some updates on the Nashville Predators, Vancouver Canucks, as well as the Florida Panthers. Will Brandon Montour be back in uh, Florida next year? We'll discuss those possibilities possibly have some more coaching updates and some signings as well a lot more coming up next So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have lots to cover today. All kinds of trade and free agency speculation around the NHL. But before we get into that, there is a few other news items around the NHL, including the Toronto Maple Leafs today officially making the announcement that they've hired associate coach Lane Lambert, former bench boss for the New York Islanders, longtime assistant to Barry Trotz. Um, we had some speculation here in the past couple of days that he was one of the potential um, experienced coaches that might be joining Craig Bruby on his staff and that was initially uh, confirmed and made official here today so he'll be the associate coach which is basically like your second in command if you will um, like I said, long experience uh, assistant coach more recently a head coach uh, will bring a, a lot of different uh, things to the table here for the Maple Leafs so a good hire by Toronto I'm not sure exactly what they're planning to give him for responsibilities but um, certainly no big surprise that that's made official of course, we also got word as well that assistant coach or former associate coach, I should say, Dean Chenouth, will not be back next season as well. We're still waiting to hear on the future of Guy Boucher. We're not sure. Sounds like he's staying, but we don't know 100% here just yet. And in Vancouver, they've uh, promoted Yogi Svejkovsky, who was uh, formerly a skills coach, has been promoted to assistant coach as well uh, to work with Rick Tockett. And they've also announced and confirmed that the Sedin Twins are going to be taking a more active role uh, next year when it comes to coaching on a more day-to-day -day basis, working with both the NHL and American Hockey League team in Abbotsford. So the Sedins will um, really not really changing their role, just taking a more active approach to the coaching side. They also also obviously do a lot with player development, which is essentially doing a lot of coaching with their younger players and prospects in the organization. Now, a couple of signings in Los Angeles today. Uh, the Kings did uh, sign Akil Thomas, who appears poised to have a good future here with the club. He gets a two-year deal, uh, and year two is a one-way contract. So next year, uh, he'll still be on a two-way deal, so he may not be a full-time NHL player. Um, but in the second year of the contract, he definitely will be, or at least he's expected to be, based on what he's going to be paid. Uh, Akil Thomas is one of their prospects that's put in a lot of time in the minors over the last number of years and certainly seems uh, ready for full-time duty. So we'll see how things go for him in training camp. And the Los Angeles Kings today also confirmed that they've signed Andre Lee. Uh, he gets a one-year, two-way deal at league minimum 775 Thousand. A few free agency notes around the NHL today. Uh, according to Rick Dollywall, uh, Vancouver Canucks defenseman Ian Cole likely heading to market on July 1. Can't completely close the door on him staying in Vancouver, but it sounds like the odds are probably against it happening. Sounds like Cole, uh, his agent, and the team have had preliminary conversations around a contract extension and had difficulty finding common ground. So not 100% not given he leaves, but it sounds like the odds are favorable that he'll go to market and likely find a deal somewhere else. But sometimes players get to market, they don't end up finding what they're hoping to find and end up backtracking. So we'll see. Um, but that's the way things are sitting right now with Cole and Vancouver. Uh, the Nashville Predators are going to be a team to watch as well. If a player like Brett Pesci does indeed make it to market, uh, the Carolina Hurricanes defenseman, according to reports, would be right near the top of the list of Nashville. Of course, we know they just treated Ryan McDonough. Uh, fair to say they're probably looking to acquire another top four defenseman, preferably somebody on the right side. And Pesci fits that description perfectly i think based on how they like to play there in the style of play he would be a terrific fit uh, but i also think brett pesci could probably fit in with probably 31 other teams besides carolina uh, i think he will be a well sought after asset should he make it to free agency we know carolina um, seems to be you know between pesci and shea i think it's more likely that pesci gets signed 
But then again, they've been negotiating for so long and have yet to come to terms. Makes you wonder what the odds are. But I think uh, Shea might be able to command a bigger payday because he's more offensive-minded. But uh, Pesci is just, if not more valuable. And like I said, we'll have lots of interest, lots of in- interesting choices to look at. So uh, not surprised to hear that Nashville would be a team to kind of keep an eye out there. Uh, another defenseman as well. Uh, there is an article from Sportsnet's Luke Fox believing that we might be seeing the final games of Brandon Montour with the Florida Panthers. Uh, of course, Montour is a pending, unrestricted free agent. He's had a great four-year run with the Florida Panthers, especially last year was a career year for him, not only in the regular season, but was a beast in the playoffs and certainly put him um, you know, a little bit more of a national attention, you could say. I mean, he's been a good defenseman for a while. Um, bounced around with a few teams before he got to Florida. I think it was probably during his time in Florida when he really matured and found his game and started to hit his peak. Um, and said last year was a career season. He also ended the year with a serious injury, which required surgery and missed some time to start this season. Um, so this season, I think between starting a little bit late and uh, you know still probably recovering a bit from that injury, he didn't have the greatest campaign. I guess numbers were down a fair bit offensively. Uh, he's been good in the playoffs. I wouldn't say he's been good at the level he was last year, but he's still you know, a good player. And I still think, based on what teams have seen from him, that he will get a handsome payday. But clearly the article uh, kind of you know outlines the fact that at this point, GM Bill Zito, uh, certainly not that he wouldn't have interest in bringing Montour back, but he's prioritized uh, some other players, including Gustav Forsling, who has arguably become... Uh, you could make an argument that he might be the team's best defenseman, and he's got a really good deal in place. So, you know, he gave uh, him priority, got him done. Um, they have some other forwards that need to be looked after as well. I think it's fair to say that 50 plus goal scorer Sam Reinhardt will take precedence over Montour, too. And it just might not really be enough room uh, to offer him the term and money that he's looking for. Again, it's not that they don't like the player, not that they don't want to keep the player, but Montour's strong play in the past couple of years may have priced himself out. Uh, Again, I wouldn't close the door and say that that's a given that he leaves. Uh, This article just suggests that it's going to be very challenging for the team to keep him, and I do concur with that uh, idea. Um, But we know Bill Zito loves value. He he loves to find value players and, you know, kind of, end up getting uh, to the point where every contract's a team-friendly deal, so to speak. Like he's found a number of pieces for that team that he originally got you know, either for cheap on a trade or free agent signing waivers. And you know, ultimately, some of these guys have you know, com- now commanding big bucks because they've done so well and been such a good fit there. And Forsling is a prime example of that. Uh, Montour, to some degree, is as well. Like I said, he's been in the league a while with the Ducks and Sabres, and you know had some good times. And the NHL showed good, uh, good skill, but he definitely had his best hockey in Florida for sure. So we'll see. He may have priced himself out, and it's going to be challenging for him to uh, to get signed there. And there's going to be lots of teams lining up to talk to Brandon Montour should he hit free agency on July the first for sure. Now Elliot Friedman also made an interesting comment today on the Jeff Merrick show talking about uh, Jake Gensel. Uh, Jake Gensel, he mentions a a team that he feels would be a dark horse team uh, that he wouldn't be shocked. And to him, it doesn't sound crazy to some it might, but he mentions the Chicago Blackhawks. He says, you know, Gensel, American-born player from the Midwest. Obviously that's where Chicago is located. Um, Chicago wants to add some talent to play with Connor Bedard. You know, Jake Gensel would certainly be a very talented winger who can score lots of goals and be a good fit with Bedard. Um, so they also have tons of cap space, so they could pay him more than most teams around the NHL as well. I mean, Gensel's already had a chance to win before. He may be content to cash in, and maybe that's his biggest priority. We don't know. Uh, again, the door's not closed on him returning to Carolina. Obviously, after what they paid to get him at the trade deadline, it's not a given that they don't sign him, but it's, you know, they're... Like I said before, they're traditionally a little bit more careful with their contracts, and he may be able to get more on the open market. I think it's probably a fair statement to make. Um, so if a team like Chicago wants to get in there, they may stand a chance and Elliot might be on to something. At the same time, we also seen reports today from The Athletic saying how Gensel was blindsided and hurt that he was traded by the Penguins. Didn't really feel like the Penguins made a fair attempt at signing him to a new long-term extension before moving him. And obviously, you know, the 
part of the reasoning given was that they couldn't come to terms on a new contract, but I think Dubas kind of explained that his main rationale was the fact that the team wasn't trending in a good direction. He didn't feel like they were in a spot where they could really take another player, you know, into well into their 30s in a long-term deal that it didn't make sense that they were treading in a direction where they needed some change. Um, and that was more of the rationale behind it, more so than the fact that they couldn't come to terms. I think he knew that he didn't want to come to terms based on what it was likely going to take to get a deal done with Gensel. But certainly Gensel uh, not having some good feelings towards the Penguins after that. And we'll see what happens. But interesting to note, Freeman's Dark Horse team, the Blackhawks, be curious to see if anything does come from that. As I mentioned as well, some other teams in the trade world. An article today in the Ottawa Sun regarding the Senators from Bruce Garriock talking about some of the things they're working on. And he mentions that the team, according to league executives that he's talked to, um, that they're saying that the Senators are certainly having conversations around Matthew Joseph. Uh, that the uh, middle six winger is somebody who went through a lot of trade talk and rumors last offseason and never came to be. A lot of that was mainly centered around the fact that they needed space to sign Shane Pinto. Of course, before they got to that point, Pinto ended up getting, you know, unexpectedly suspended due to that gambling issue. And well, that kind of took everything and threw it for a loop here. So Joseph ended up not getting dealt. Not to say that for sure he would have been, but um, you know, re- reports indicated that he was one of the names that were out there. Um, he got this day, had a hot start, then he had a really slow second half. And in my opinion, a lot of the issues with Joseph, uh, partly is, um, he's. I think it's fair to say he's battled consistency his whole career. A great skater, good in the PK, uh, gets lots of chances, and if he had the hands to keep up with his feet, he'd be phenomenal when it comes to the offense and scoring more goals. But I don't know, nine times out of ten, he'll get a breakaway and won't score. Um, you know, it's just one of those things where he's he's great. He's a smart player. He's a really fast player, good on the PK. He just doesn't have the finish. Uh, and I think that the, as much as they like his speed, according to Gary Ock, they think they can upgrade uh, and make that third line better. At times, he played in the top six and was a top two-line player. And he put up the points when he was playing a bit with uh, – with Brady and Timmy, he played a bit with uh, uh, Batherson, Drew. Like, there's different guys that he's paired with, um, you know, and Pinto and the, and the second line. The combinations of change, of course, throughout the year. And he did produce, but he would not produce consistently. And eventually, he would make his way back to the third line. And in that role, like I said, defensively, he was good. But he didn't produce offensively. And according to Gary Ock, they think they can upgrade from that. So we'll see. Uh, obviously, they don't really aren't in a predicament right now where they need to move them for space to sign another player like it was last year. It's a completely different scenario. They just think they can make the team better. I know some fans are not happy about that. Uh, they like Joseph. They like his speed. I agree, and I, th- I see all those things too. But there's also parts of his game that I find frustrating, like the lack of finish and the inconsistency. So we'll see. Uh, obviously, his name is out there. They're also uh, working on moving Eric Brandstrom. Again, they want to change the uh, construction of their decor. Uh, they like Brandstrom. He improved a lot. But he's just not what they need back there. Um, at the end of the day, he needs a new contract. He's a restricted free agent. And they may not even offer a qualifying offer if they get past the draft when that needs to be issued. They you know, think they'd like to get a trade done before the draft, if possible. So don't be surprised if his name is out there a bit as well. New Jersey Devils GM Tom Fitzgerald has made it clear that his number ten overall pick is a hundred percent available and in play. Um, he's not mincing any words about making sure people know that. Um, and even though they're in the market for a goalie, it's not an absolute given that that number ten overall pick is involved in a goalie trade. Uh, they could find other areas of the team to upgrade, although goaltending is probably. Really at the top of their list for a list of priorities and things to do. Um, so we will see. Some goalies, though, that are, are higher level, more elite level experienced guys like Linus Allmark or Jacob Markstrom, it might take more than that pick to get a deal done, which might, you know, give Fitzgerald a little bit of, uh, you know, ability to kind of step back and maybe not want to pay that price. Uh, belief is for the Bruins, if they convince Allmark to waive his no trade, that it would take the number 10 overall pick and something else to get it done. Calgary for Markstrom, I don't know exactly. It was believed before that it was a combination of uh, Alexander Holtz. Uh, Dawson Mercer was believed to be one of the players that Calgary was asking about too. Um, and I believe 
another prospect in there too, uh, maybe a first rounder. So I know Calgary wanted multiple pieces. So we will see. But they were also looking for um, salary retention, which right now New Jersey appears that they don't need that. So uh, or want that. So we'll see what happens. Uh, certainly another name that's been out there for New Jersey as well that's popped up here this week, which we know is a goalie that's been on the market. And it would be cheaper acquisition would be Minnesota goalie Philip Gustafson. Um, Minnesota New Jersey could connect on a deal. Uh, Gustafson is believed to be made available by Bill Guerin in Minnesota, and they could certainly get him for a cheaper price. And uh, Gustafson Allen combo in New Jersey. Might not be the worst, you know, scenario as well. They both had their moments being great goalies, so uh, we will see how things go. The Ducks are certainly another team to watch as well. Uh, as I mentioned uh, at the beginning here, of the video Montreal in Anaheim are believed to be re-engaged in talks around Trevor Zegers, but the Ducks have also been known to be having conversations and entertaining deals for John Gibson. So another goalie that is been on the market for a long time and i'm not sure how easy the deal will come together but gibson's name is out there again and the ducks are believed to be having some talks around them but the montreal canadians are believed to have been engaged in talks with the ducks around zegris and the canes around marty natchez doesn't mean they're going to trade for both players but they are involved in conversations around trading for either or both of these guys uh, they probably have the assets to pull off both but it's going to be challenging. Pierre Lebrun, uh, his new article for The Athletic, indicates that he says the Habs and Ducks have kind of reconnected around Zegras talks and that they're you know ongoing and the Habs certainly have interest. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we've talked a lot about Zegras in Montreal in the past few months. Uh, you know, Obviously, he's got a good friend on the team in Cole Caulfield, somebody who they likely feel could fit in the top six quite nicely and at a different level of skill that they don't currently have with that team. They've got a good mix, obviously. With uh, you know a smart player like Suzuki, somebody with uh, Slavkovsky, he's got the size and strength, and now adds the goal scoring in. And of course, you get Kirby Doc coming back uh, off a major injury. Caulfield, you know, Zegers would just be a different kind of player uh, that could be a good complement there. Um, so there's no doubt talks are ongoing. But LeBron also indicated he's not sure that Kent Hughes, the GM of the Habs, will want to end up paying the price that Pat Verbeek and the Ducks are looking for on Zegers. They're definitely willing to listen. They're engaged in talks. Doesn't mean they'll pull the trigger. They have to get what they want. Uh, I know Montreal will not move the number five overall pick for a player like Zegers. It would have to be something much more significant than that. I think to, to pull the trigger on a deal that would involve that pick, it's believed they will most likely execute and use the pick. Um, but yeah, that's something I wouldn't uh, wouldn't bank on. But when it comes to Marty Natchez in Carolina, the Habs definitely involved in conversations there too. They're one of, uh, well, I'm sure there's many, but at least probably four or five teams that have been publicly made known by NHL reporters and insiders that have checked in on the Canes on Natchez's availability and have had some degree of trade conversations around that player. Obviously, we'd have to come with a contract extension, um, but I know Friedman made mention that as much as um, the Montreal Canadiens have interest in the player. He's not sure that the Canes will trade him to Montreal. Um, there's a few other teams he talked about as well. Just not because that of anything else. Then he doesn't think Montreal necessarily has what the Hurricanes are looking for. Now, we don't know exactly what they want. I think it's fair to say Carolina, who's in win-now mode, is going to want a hockey-type trade where they get back a player, at least one player, who's going to be an impactful player on their roster immediately, whether it's a forward, a top defender, or somebody that makes sense for them to be able to continue being in that win-now mode. Um, so Montreal has lots of interesting assets that I think a lot of teams would be interested in, including Carolina, but not necessarily ones that are going to push the needle forward to winning today. Um, it's believed in either of these deals that the main assets that Kent Hughes would be willing to dangle would be some of their young, uh, up-and-coming defensemen. Uh, we know they have plenty of them. Uh, you know, not to mention, I don't know that they want to move a guy like Reinbacher or Lane Hudson. Um, to some degree, it's believed Arbor Jackai probably somebody they prefer not to. But if they can get a player of one of these guys' natures, then it might change their their attitude there. But those guys are believed to not be players they would want to move. But you're looking at guys like Harris and Struble and Kovacevic. Maybe Mike Matheson. Um, you know, they have lots of other younger players here that are interesting to other teams. But 
Again, not to mention they have lots of draft picks. So between the defensemen, prospects, and the in the draft currency, it would be the main things they would like to trade to get it done, and that might prove difficult. I don't know, looking at Montreal's roster, what Carolina would really prefer when it comes to Marty Natchez. I do understand what Freeman's saying, that as much as Montreal has interest, and they could probably make an interesting offer with some of these prospects and picks, it's not what Carolina needs. Unless Carolina determines that, you know what, we can then take those assets and flip them to another team for the, what we do want. And that could be where it kind of becomes more of a three-team deal. But as of right now, the Habs are definitely engaged in conversations around both of these top young players. Hard to say if they can pull off either trade. If I had to pick, I'd say the Zegers deal is probably more likely than an H's trade. But again, challenging to do. High price tags. Uh, as we get closer to the draft, price tags are going to change as GMs get more anxious and aggressive to want to get business done. Of course, right now, we know the NHL draft combine. Lots of conversations are kind of having, you know, getting started. The wheels are in motion. A lot of things at the combine get started and then end up getting finished at the draft so we'll see uh, the Habs are busy doesn't mean they're going to pull off multiple blockbuster deals or top young players but I know they want to at least make something happen for sure so we'll see what happens further later this month once we have a better clear picture on what they're doing let me know your thoughts on all today's news and rumors down in the comments we'll discuss further if you're new to the channel make sure you subscribe and stick around we'll keep you up to date with the latest news rumors and analysis of all 32 NHL teams thanks for watching I'll catch you next time Bye.